The original Springfield High School opened in 1911. It sat vacant for many years of late, but today it has a brand new 21st century mission opening as the Global Impact STEM Academy and school administrators and students could not be more excited. I want to be an orthopedic surgeon, um, so I'm going to take a lot of college. Um, but with being here, I'm able to understand how things are going to work, how I'm going to get ready for college. Abigail Myers, incoming sophomore and future orthopedic surgeon. That means she needs all the STEM classes she can get, and the Global Impact STEM Academy does exactly that. Science, technology, engineering, and math. And so technical skill content that goes along with um, traditional academics embedded within the courses that they have, and so students get uh, a real world, real relevant view of, uh, of what's needed within uh, the workforce. The Academy partners with Clark State Community College, offering the latest high-tech curriculum, including agri-science, high-paying careers in food safety, energy, and the environment. And the program serves students in Clark County, but is open to any student in Ohio. And what it does is it creates specific pathways to careers in our region. So you start in junior high, high school, and you can finish at Clark State, and then get your two years at Clark State, and then go to Ohio State. It's just an amazing opportunity for these students. The majority of the project was funded by an $11.3 million grant from Ohio's Straight A Fund. The school dedicated a special plaque to Senator Chris Widener for his vision and dedication to see the project become reality. Well, it's a great day for Springfield and Clark County. I mean, to reopen a building that was built in 1911 for the purposes of job training, innovation, and the creation of new educational programs is really exciting. AgriScience took center stage at the Ohio State Fair. State senators took the Ag Committee there to talk about the industry's role in the state's economy. The collaboration of the different departments is so essential for getting things done, especially clean water in the state. And I just love the fact that the departments work together so well. As the fair ends, the school year begins, and this year it comes with a special sales tax holiday the kids are ready for. Cool jeans and t-shirts. August 7th, 8th and 9th brings the first ever sales tax holiday in Ohio. That amounts to a school wardrobe for many families, adding extra value to their back-to-school budget. Any item of clothing, $75 or less, or any school supplies, $20 or less, and it's unlimited. Um, as much as you buy, um, there's no cap. Um, you can uh, reap the savings um, for whatever you want. Plato's Closet believes it's good for families and good for business. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are normally big days for us anyway, but with the sale, it's going to be even busier, and we can't Got wait. Got a question for you. Where in the world has summertime gone? It's already back to school time, back to school shopping, and full swing right here at Plato's Closet. Even bigger bargains this year because 7th, 8th, and 9th of August, no state sales tax, a major, really, effort spearheaded by the Ohio Senate, and it was your bill, State Senator Kevin Bacon. This has got to be a good feeling for you. Yeah, thank you, John. It, it, it's exciting. We've worked on this for years. Um, we've seen this work in other states. Um, a lot of anticipation for the 7th, 8th, and 9th, but uh, I, think it's, I think we're going to see great results, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Was it really designed around that whole idea of back-to-school shopping? Yes, it was. I mean, it was the idea was to give people a little something back. The hard, the hard working Ohioans, all the taxes we pay, it's going to give them a little break. At the same time, create a lot of economic stimulus. Um, a lot of the, the retailers, uh, they're going to go out and they're going to have sales. Um, they're going to advertise. We're going to have a little Black Friday-like excitement, and it's going to be fun. And, and for you, you have children, so, you know, it just seems like nothing ever gets cheaper anymore when it comes to school. <laughs> That's true, and we get to come to places like here at Plato's Closet where we actually shop, um, and um, we're, we're ready to get it rolling, and the kids are excited, and it's just going to be a fun time. You know, uh, th is this the very first time this has been done then in the state of Ohio? It is. Um, I've worked on this in some capacity for about eight years now. And we have a little history. We can look at what other states have done. And we were able to, to do a study and, and make ours, we think, just, just the right uh, combination. Now, when we're talking about back-to-school clothing or clothing items in general, it's just not back-to-school and it's not right. just for kids. It's $75 per item, up to $75 yes. per item. Yes. So that covers jeans and shirts mm -hmm. and khaki. And it's not just for mom. It's not just for the students either. It can be for mom and dad, too. That's correct. Any item of clothing, $75 or less, or any school supplies $20 or less and it's unlimited um, as much as you buy um, there's no cap um, you can uh, reap the savings um, for whatever you want all right Stacey. a major bipartisan victory 32 to nothing the Ohio Senate votes in passing new accountability and transparency measures in the charter school law 
here in Ohio. It's important that we allow opportunities for parents to make the decision that's best for their kids. Moms and dads make far better choices than education bureaucrats. And so this bill makes sure that moms and dads have accurate information about the differential quality of charter schools in Ohio. Bright and students sporting choice. bright shirts highlighted online learning day at the State House. They're part of Ohio's growing charter school community. Once signed into law by the governor, the Senate's charter school changes, increases accountability for those schools and the companies managing them, including a ban on something called sponsor hopping. Unfortunately, when a school is, is failing, that what's been happening up to now is that very often that school just finds another sponsor rather than be shut down by the one they have. And so this enables them to stay open, not fix the problems, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a key problem, and Ohio is one of the few places that that was legal to do. Uh, we've made it so that if you're in academic distress, you can't change sponsors, you're done. The focus must be on making sure students are learning. We need options, um, options are good, but they all have to be quality. A message from Israel from the Knesset's Deputy Speaker, Hillick Barr. The Ohio Senate recently passed a resolution calling on Congress to vote against the Obama administration's Iran nuclear agreement. Speaker Barr spoke about not only Israel's relationship with the country, but also its partnership with Ohio. The rabbi talked here about the American spirit, and I also have a confession. I am a big, big fan of the American spirit, and I believe that Ohio embodies the spirit, the spirit of pursuing excellence, of creating and building, aspiring to new peaks of achievement. You don't have to wait for November to vote on statewide issues facing Ohioans. Early voting means you can vote right now. And folks have the next four weeks to exercise their right to vote, including on Election Day. It's a really easy thing to do. You can contact your Board of Elections. You can print the form at home and mail it in to get an absentee ballot sent to your house. Or, of course, you can show up on Election Day. And many counties, uh, the Boards of Elections, are offering in-person early voting at various locations. So just check with your County Board of Elections or on the Ohio Secretary of State website for all that information. There's no excuse for people not to vote in the state of Ohio. Really amazing technology these days. What do we ever do without one of these things right here? You know, it's really convenience at your fingertips. Not only can you renew your car registration online soon, you may be able to register to vote online. It's a much more error-free and fraud-free way of doing registrations. The Senate cast the first yes. vote in taking Ohio's election system into 21st century technology by passing a bill authorizing online voter registration in Ohio. It's a plan crafted and coordinated with the Senate by Secretary of State John Husted. Well, moving to an online voter registration system is the next step in our efforts to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat in Ohio. The plan is projected to save millions by putting the data entry process with the potential voter. The fact is that when you process a paper application, the voter fills it out, stuffs it in an envelope, it goes down to your county board of elections, they open it, somebody sits there and does data entry. This takes that middleman out of the process. If Senate President Keith Faber helped guide the bill through the Senate. He believes the system will serve Ohio voters well as it provides even more opportunity to cast their vote while keeping Ohio a nationwide leader in access to the polls. Couple that with the other thing we did in the budget to allow them to have electronic poll books. So you can have poll books that are electronic at each voting location uh, that help take care of the problem. If somebody comes in is at the wrong location, you can say, no, 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 it's going to pull your name up because you have that large data source and you're going to be able to direct them to the right place. Electronic gatekeeping makes the system more protected from voter fraud as soon as someone logs in. If someone was attempting to commit fraud using online voter registration, they would never get in the door. Uh, the system would tell them that they are not uh, the, the person they say they are because their, their information would not match with the DMV database. And if that were to happen, uh, their registration would be rejected right there on the screen. We'll make it convenient for voters to register. We make it more secure because it's essentially photo ID at the point of registration, and it saves millions of dollars for local governments because no longer do they have to do the data entry manually. We can upload it to the voter registration database electronically. It saves millions in time and energy.